Prince Harry abandons libel case against the Mail on Sunday. The day was due to hand over a list of documents leaving him facing a £750,000 legal bill. Turns out he's not completely immune to the rigours of common sense then, is he? Old Rusty Nads has just got a short, sharp shock. I'm actually going to be covering a double whammy of stories here because this case isn't just for royal watchers and people like me who take pleasure in pointing out that the Ginger Prince has got the IQ of a pork pie and his wife's about as likeable as a radioactive leper. It, it's not. It's about a really, really big issue, which is... The UK needs to get rid of these absurd laws that essentially make it illegal to disagree with people in positions of power. Stay tuned and I'll tell you why. Right then, the other story I'm going to be segueing into is the ongoing saga of Eni Aluko, another woman who I would be as interested in hugging as an 800 pound sumo wrestler with chronic halitosis <laughs> and body odor. Um, these two stories are linked because they both involve people in positions of authority trying to use the state to crush you if you disagree with them or don't like them. Yes, that's right, we essentially have state mandated politeness in the United Kingdom, well, Europe as a whole. But the UK is really at the pointy end of this issue. The UK is a joke. It's got to the point now where they're essentially saying, if you don't like somebody, you can be arrested and criminally charged for it. And I'm going to get into that. But first of all, let's start with Ginger Bollock, shall we? Prince Harry today admitted defeat in a libel case he brought against the Mail on Sunday on the day he was due to hand over the documents. The Duke of Sussex abandoned his case hours before a deadline for his lawyers to pass over a list of relevant docs. They could have eventually featured in the trial, which was over claims he had attempted to mislead the public. Instead, Harry threw in the towel, with his lawyers informing the High Court at 10am he was discontinuing his case. Yes, essentially, I'm going to boil this down to be as simplistic as possible. This was a case brought about because he was trying to say that they libelled him by suggesting he was being dishonest. And something like that, no matter what you think of Prince Harry, love him, (laughs) or hate him, (laughs) love him or hate him, whatever. It's about the principle of the matter. We can't criminalise liking people. I don't like him. I think he's a liar. I think his wife couldn't lie straight in bed. I wouldn't believe me again, Mardi Arse's radio. She is a proven, demonstrable liar. She is a slack-drawed, yo-yo knicker Jezebel of the highest order. And she grabbed her ankles to get where she is today. Kind of like Kamala Harris. Except, I mean, (laughs) Kamala's even worse because she was getting rattled by a pensioner. There's relics in the British Museum that aren't as old as the crusty, (laughs) the crusty politician that Kamala Harris was noshing off to climb that greasy pole. So at least me again stayed within her age category. But she's a shameless, brazen social climber. Piers Morgan might be a reptile, but he pointed this out years ago, the numerous demonstrable instances of her telling lies. So they cannot have a, we cannot have a situation where me saying, I don't like that person, and I think that person is a liar, is illegal. So he didn't have a leg to stand on, rusty nuts. He should have quit while he was very, very far behind, stayed in Montecito, and finally disappeared from my computer screen, smartphone, newspaper, BBC, forever. Because I am sick and tired of hearing about him and that repellent shrieking harpy that he happens to put his cock in every now and then. So that's it. I don't need to go over it anymore. The ins and outs of the story are irrelevant. All the newspaper really had to do was demonstrate that that an honest person could have held the position that the Duke was responsible for attempting to mislead people. That's it. That's it. Just had to prove that the person who wrote it actually believed what they thought they did. And even if they didn't... You know what that is? Trying to get people in trouble, having opinions you don't like, for saying to them, oh no, no, you didn't really think I was lying, did you? No, no, you thought I was being honest, and you don't really hate me. You definitely love me, don't you? Say that you love me. God, I love you. It's a thought crime. (laughs) It's a thought crime. You can't know what was in the heart of the man that wrote it. These are thought crimes. People like me have been saying it for years and you know it's true. It's 1984 was like a documentary 
and the power mad globalist psychopaths that run the world nowadays. It's, it's as if they watched 1984, the good one with John Hurt in it. It's like they watched it and went, that's a good idea. Let's do that. It wasn't supposed to be a how-to manual. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic talking about this story, here's exhibit B. Pundit horror. Any Lugo flees the UK fearing her safety after Joy Barton's sexist rant uh, as she and Lucy Ward take legal action. Listen, listen, I'll, I'll just make this as plain as I can, right? A normal bloke not liking a football commentator is not a rant. This isn't a rant, this is my opinion. A rant almost has to be a little bit illogical. It's like you're, you're at the height of passion and you're rrr, 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 spewing the words out really in an, in an impassioned way. Joey Barton simply went on Twitter and said, well, he made some jokes. He said she's killed more games than Fred West, which doesn't really make sense. It's not the best, but uh, I mean, it's just a joke. Uh, and he said he doesn't like listening to her and he doesn't think most football fans listening to her. He's entitled to his opinion, but not according to the psychopaths that run the world. Because look at this. Barton sparked fury when he took aim at the pundits, dubbing them the friend Rosemary West of football commentary. Barton questioned their legitimacy as pundits after they covered Crystal Palace's draw with Everton. Because they're not qualified and they don't know what they're talking about. Some of the stupid things some of these female commentators have said lately. And, and, and I will concede, there are some good female commentators. Everybody liked Hem Helen Chamberlain off Soccer AM. She was good. She, she actually seemed to know what she was talking about. When she was talking about football, you went, eh, good point. These two planks. I would rather listen to the peculiar mishmash of sounds it would make if my dog fell into a wood chipper in me back garden while my granddad was loudly shagging me granny in the garage. <laughs> Just, that has never happened. They are terrible. They're not qualified. They don't know what they're talking about. They make elementary mistakes. The famous 19 goals in 40 games. That's a goal a game. Yeah, it is if you went to the Diane Abbott School of Mathematics. But to everybody else, you just sound like a plank. Shortly afterwards, Aluko wrote, I've been scared this week. I didn't leave my house until Friday and now I'm abroad. Strong woman. Strong woman. Yeah, strong woman. Flee the country. It's like Ronda Rousey. Do you remember? Everyone was going on about Ronda Rousey. Oh, she beat up Floyd May weather then she lost once to the preacher's daughter burst into tears and had a mental breakdown yeah strong woman the reason it's not sexist to have a go at these incompetent women who get shoveled into places where they don't belong is because you're pandering and it pappers all over the reputations of the women that earned it helen chamberlain must be devastated that she actually studied a craft and knows what she's talking about. Gordon McQueen's daughter's well liked as well. She certainly is in the North East. Because they know what they're talking about. They put these tokens in who haven't got the foggiest. And it must drive the girls who know the trade wild. Because they're thinking, oh my god, they're making everybody with this set of threepenny bits look like an idiot. Look at this one from yesterday. It is, it is a big game for both occasions. Not long to go until the start of that game. Both teams have made two changes within their squad. No one who comes in for Ivory Coast who made two changes since they beat um, Guinea-Bissau. They brought in their captain, Sergio Herrera, and they've also managed to bring in some of their other players as well into the squad. Um, so there'll be a few familiar faces that you can recognise within this Ivory Coast team and even across um, the, the game itself coming up against Nigeria. So there'll be huge expectations for them coming into this game. And they'll be hoping to take something from Nigeria. They've won this tournament and before again but they haven't won it in 40 years and they are the host nation coming into this game now if you look into nigeria squad themselves they've also made two changes both within the midfield in comes fulham's calvin bassi so we've got some premier league experience coming in there Salman chakao has moved to milan in the summer after five years at villarreal has also moved into the squad he comes in for winger moses simon who is not going to be in the squad and ultimately al hassan yusuf was injured in the last game so he won't be within that team but yeah both very excited teams coming into this game but i think most of the eyes are going to be on victor osserman an african talent that has been exceptional throughout this year he did score in their last game and he'll be hoping to get another one in and ultimately get that win against nigeria yeah there is that goal um that we saw so um <laughs> there's that goal uh, that we saw playing for nigeria you could see his face look at his face there uh, yeah, the uh, the Nigerians hoping he can score against Nigeria. Kill me. Please kill me. She did not have a Scooby-Doo. Who the hell is Sergi Arigiru? Uh, 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 uh. Sam Chikau. And Ivory Coast hasn't won it for 40 years. They won it in 2015. And in 1992. 
think they've won it twice in recent history you absolute log this is what he was talking about it's tokenism it's giving unqualified incompetent people jobs because the DEI walk thought police run the world that's that what's wrong with that am I not allowed to have that opinion is that against the law well apparently it is in the UK because lo and behold any Luco is taking legal action following Barton's rants. She said, if you come out and are racist or sexist or misogynistic and threaten people online, there are laws for that that govern behaviour. It's not free. It's not freedom of consequences either. There are consequences for that. And I've taken advice from lawyers and decided upon a cause of action. So they come right out and say it. If somebody else decides that you are misogynistic so essentially if you criticize anyone who's a woman anyone who's a minority anyone who's short anyone who's tall anyone who's fat anyone who's thin basically if you're impolite to people someone else decides that it's a result of hate speech oh yeah there can be old as well ageism that's a thing just like prince harry decided that someone else was telling lies oh no you're not being honest yeah yeah yeah. i actually believe that you're a ginger plank and i hate you no 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 you love me and you don't believe it so you're going to prison well the same goes here you criticize any of lugo because you don't think she's a good commentator or a mate there who was commentating on the football with a bin liner on her head if you decide you don't like them because they're not very competent you said that because you hate them yeah because they're women and you might say stupid things like what do you mean I've got three daughters and a wife and a mother. What are you talking about? I just want to watch the football. But that, you don't really think that, do you? We decide what you think and we decide who you're allowed to not like and we decide if it's hate speech. And if you say bad things about Donald Trump and you hold his head up on the front of a magazine, severed, decapitated head, that's not hate speech. Go on television and say, I think we should murder the president. That's definitely not hate speech. But you know what is hate speech? Politely disagreeing with people that the powerful like, right? Easy. (laughs) Now, to sum up, if it isn't obvious, I was being sarcastic. Here's a solution. It's not like me to make a video without a nice sensible solution at the end of it. So here it is. This is complicated, so you'll have to be patient. We can build a machine that scans your eyeballs and then uses AI to determine whether or not the things you think And the things you say are your actual opinions. And if they aren't your real opinions, the robot AI tells us that they aren't your real opinions. And then you go to prison, right? So that's option one. Option two, get rid of all of the ludicrous, poorly defined, unpoliceable, illogical, irrational, brain dead, hate speech laws. Rip up the Communications Act introduced by Tony Blair and wrestle back the freedom to disagree with and dislike arseholes regardless of their immutable characteristics. There you go. There's your two options. Pick one. Bear in mind, I fully support your right to dislike and disagree with me. You can even call me names. You can say, you little hairy northern chimpanzee, you make me sick. And I'll go, oh, that's not the first time you've told me that, Prince Harry. Get out of my house, you ginger mog. See, the system works. He insults me, I insult him. Maybe the founding fathers and the likes of John Locke and all those sensible enlightenment thinkers, maybe they were onto something when they, you know, just threw the whole idea of freedom of speech out there. But let me know what you think. Do you think these laws are enforceable? Do you think it's reasonable to prosecute people for opinions that the powerful don't like? If you do, let me know in the comments. Explain to me reasonably and rationally why you think what you think and whether or not you don't like me. And rest assured, I will not have the police knocking on your door or smashing your toilet up with a hammer just because we disagree. It's it's lunacy that I even have to make this video, but we are where we are. Let me know what you think. Do your very best to stay free. And remember, the vast majority of the people in the world think it's perfectly reasonable to strongly dislike Prince Harry, his lying slut bucket wife and talentless TV presenters. All right, let's end on a high note. Have a great weekend. I'll be doing a live stream tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. UK. Be there or be square. Have a good night. Cheers. (laughs) 